We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to talk about erecting an antenna tower. Now here at our small grass strip, I wanted an antenna for our little radio station to listen to airplanes and traffic and maybe put a, an ADSB antenna way at the top so we can kind of monitor the area. But anyhow, the need for a tall tower, let's say 50 feet or so, was obviously too expensive to purchase. And another problem with a lot of towers is that you have to climb them to get to the top to change a connection, change an antenna, do maintenance, etc. So I wanted a tower that I could easily tilt over and do maintenance on the top while standing on the ground and then tilt it back up. These designs have been out there for a while so I went on the internet and did some research and found a design that I liked and I basically pieced the various features together and created my own tower. And so in this video you'll see how I, and you could follow along also if you ever had a need for one of these, created a nice 50 foot self-standing, in other words it doesn't need guy wires, tilt over tower. By going on the internet, I was able to look at other people's designs. And so I took a lot of pictures, and in fact, I was able to get a lot of the important specifications from other vendors by looking at the plans that they provided, which you need to submit for local zoning in a lot of areas. So I got specifications like how thick the metal should be, how large it should be, the various pieces, how big the hole in the ground that is necessary for the concrete base needs to be. And there's all sorts of these out there on the internet. So I did some research and I basically hobbled together the parts that I liked and the features and specifications I liked. So by no means is my plan certified by an engineer, but generally speaking, it uses the same characteristics and specifications as the ones that are available commercially. So for the most part, my design should stand up when all is said and done. The first step is to dig a hole for the concrete base that is needed. We located a spot and created a two by four frame and this concrete base is going to be three feet by three foot square by four foot deep. So somebody has to find a way to dig a hole all the way down to four feet. And notice the telephone pole. That's what's going to be removed eventually because that is our current tower. Now, one method I came up with was to drill a series of holes with a powered hole digger and that way by loosening the earth it would be easier to shovel out because the uh, first foot is nice dirt and after that it turns kind of into clay it really becomes pretty tough so here's what it looked like after several holes uh, it did help but Ultimately, this had to be dug out by hand and dug and dug and dig and dig and dig and eventually we got all of the dirt out. Quite a job, but we're down four feet and we are now ready for our next step. The next step is to create a cage. This is made out of common rebar and it was bent by hand and then the corners were tack welded together with a wire welder and the purpose of this is to keep the concrete block base 
solid and together. Uh, even though there's a lot of weight from the tower, there is a lot of twisting and torque by winds that blow, so this just holds the whole thing together. And we have a final measure to prove that we got our full four feet down to the bottom. Now, to attach the base, we're going to use four J rods here. That these are threaded at the top for the base, and the little hook at the bottom is what keeps these from pulling out of the concrete. I used a piece of plywood as a way to space them together, and this will go at the very top of our form. So I have it hanging here in the center of our hole, and also wired it, one of the rods, to the earth for a ground. And we are just about ready to pour at this stage. The amount of concrete needed for this hole in the ground was a little bit over a yard and the local concrete company came and delivered it for about three hundred dollars and I would say a very large portion of that amount was for delivery. It is a small amount for a delivery like this. Now I had never finished concrete before but if I couldn't do a 3x3 three three square then I'd be in trouble. So I did the best I could and we're going to let it dry for a little while and then knock the forms off and here's what it looks like with the forms all knocked off. Next step we secured our steel plate base. Now this came as part of our steel inventory that we ordered and this is one by one foot square by three quarter inches thick and of course we need four holes in the corner these holes are basically an inch and an eighth and drilling those holes and drilling them accurately was a little bit of a challenge and of course we learned that slow speed is what was most important and starting from a small size up to a large size but we finally got it completed and the real test for it was to sit on top of our base and make sure the studs came through the holes just right. And of course we have a nut underneath and then a nut and washer on top. What we are looking at here is the majority of our steel inventory. There are two 24 foot long square tubes. One is a four inch square, the other is a three inch square. They are each a quarter inch thick. So you are looking at these two tied together here weighing over 500 pounds and the problem was how do you get 500 pounds off of a truck when they make it clear that the driver is not there to help you unload so basically I tied a rope to the end of this bundle and then just yanked it off the truck using the van and the box you see there was my method for preventing major damage when it hits the driveway either to the poles or to the driveway so that box is full of lots of foam and packing materials and it performed very nicely it obviously took the brunt of the fall but kept it off the driveway so that worked out very nice and one of the biggest challenges of course was managing these two poles as far as moving them the four inch pole weighs over 300 pounds and the three inch pole weighs about 200 pounds. And let the fabrication begin. Our first step was to take a six foot long piece of five inch square tubing and weld that to our three quarter inch base plate. Now where do you find a good welder? Because I certainly was not up to the task for such an important series of welds. Well, always check your local welding college and find a young person who has graduated, they are certified, and is currently employed, and they will be happy to work after work, and you'll get a great rate, and you'll get a good weld, 
And so I cut the pieces and had him do the welds. Our next step was to create some gussets for the base and weld those in place. So this makes for a very strong connection between the two. I had an old stick welder which worked out just fine so no high-tech welding on any of this just good solid with uh, plenty of necessary power. The next step is to cut a short section of 3 inch tube and this is going to be our pulley support for our cable for bringing or tilting the tower up and down and this will get welded onto and overlapping our 5 inch square base plate tube. And we'll see in a moment how this makes sense and how it will be used. Next we create a couple of very thick L angles to be welded near the bottom of the base and this will form the mounting of the hinge pin. So this is going to take quite a bit of weight. And essentially, we are done creating the base structure, which will get mounted to our concrete form. And if you look at the very, very top, you will see a red pulley. And this will guide the cable that pulls the tower up and down. And we will see that occur in just a moment. But first, we're going to do a trial fit of our 24-foot tower pole to this base. Now, we have it lying on its side, and everything is very heavy, so we'll use a jack to help us align this long tube into its hinge support at the bottom of the base. Yep, yep. And I did such a good job right here with these handles. Our next step is to then carefully paint the whole structure so that it can survive outside for the rest of its life. And then we need to move it outdoors. And uh, this thing no doubt weighs somewhere near a couple hundred pounds. So a hand truck was used. And if you notice some ramps back there, that allowed me to get it close to the base and then I had to get a second person so that we could lift it ever so slightly to get it onto the four studs. Leveling the base is important but easy to do because we had the four nuts underneath the base plate and those could be rotated to get the vertical part nice and plumb. Now the next task is to move the 300 and some odd pound 24 foot long 4 inch pole that actually makes up the tower itself into place. At 300 pounds it's a little too heavy for even two people to safely manage. So once again we're going to drag it and kind of tow it using the hitch of the minivan and that will get us very close into location. Then the rest of the work is to line it up with our hinge pin and put that into place. And we'll use a jack so that we can move these heavy objects very easily. Now you can see how easy it is to work on antennas because they're sitting waist high. That was the end of our tower pole. And after attaching the antennas, we can then lift that arm all the way up using a winch with a steel cable. 
Notice the electric winch sitting at the base. That's going to be mounted up on the back side of our post here. And then the cable will run to the very top where there is a pulley and then back down to attach to our 24 foot arm. And let me tell you something about trying to figure out which winch to purchase. Be very careful when purchasing or sizing up a winch like I did here. I need approximately 1,000 pounds of pull. That was calculated based on the weight of the pole and the fact of where it was attached and that I'm pulling it from horizontal to vertical. Well, you might think that a winch that says 4,500 pounds is more than enough. Well, that 4,500 pounds means that that is the weight of an object that can be pulled laterally, sideways, if it's sitting on wheels. I assume not with the brakes on or stuck in mud. So in other words, they rate these winches um, very strangely and not very accurately. Uh, it's not a hoist, it's a winch, so they don't have to rate it with actual direct pull. But anyhow, it was a little frustrating, but through trial and error, this one seems to be sized appropriately. And here you get to see the very first lifting of the antenna tower from horizontal to vertical. Here is a behind the scenes look at the entire setup. That battery of course is used to power the winch. The winch pulls that steel cable across a metal pulley at the very top and of course we reverse the winch electrically to put it back down. Here's another lift. Now you might say this is only 24 feet tall. We were supposed to have 50 feet. Well, remember we have another tube, three inch square tube that will go inside of this one. That's in phase two and that will be telescoped or cranked upwards after we lift it to vertical. Now, do we really need to keep that telephone pole with the other TV antenna on the top? We do not. It is redundant. So let's take that pole down because it's really tough to get to the top to make adjustments. Now please notice that box. That box is going to cushion that pole as it comes down because we'd like to save some of the hardware up at the top of this pole so we'd like a soft landing. Remember it did work for us once before. The idea has one flaw to it though. The box has to be positioned correctly. Well, this concludes phase one of our tower installation. In phase two, we will insert the smaller square tube inside of our four inch square, and then with a hand crank, have the ability to crank it up to the full 50 feet basically doubling the height as it stands right now. And of course we will research and get some nice antennas to put at the top. This TV antenna will stay just halfway up. And there you have it. Now you have an idea of what it takes to create, build, and install a nice tower so that you can get your antennas up really high and yet still bring them down for maintenance. Quite a unique achievement when it comes to antenna towers. Now's the time back to building, please, everyone.